Once again, we're back. I want to first start off by thanking everybody for liking, subscribing, sharing, uh, giving them the business. You know what I'm saying? Keep doing it. We're going to keep bringing that dope content to you and giving you that information that you need. As always, this is Chris Gotti Lorenzo and my partner, Don De Nero. You already know, que voila, Mr. Money for the Gringos, and we're here. Uh, que voila, que voila. Hip-hop and we continue. And you know, today we have an incredible guest. This is our 50th year anniversary of hip-hop. This is why we're doing this one. This show is dedicated to the 50 years of hip-hop. This is what I want to do right here. And I wanted to just say... Thank you for showing up and coming out. I appreciate you so much. I learned so much about this man. Uh, and it was like when De Niro told me he could get him, I said, bring him here, please. This is going to be a great show for all you to get educated on, independent artists, entrepreneurs, and all you fake thugs. You might get some real chin checking in a minute. You know what I'm saying? That might go down as well. But that's all good. You know what I'm saying? And I want to just say thank you again. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Danero. Yeah, you know, know you, my setting brother. Everything up. And love is love. How do you want? Because you do have many names. I know mm-hmm. Thurston is one. So how would you want to be presented in? Uh, my, I mean, my name is Thurston Howard the Third. Yes. The Polo Rican Skillionaire. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. How I present myself. So here we <laughs> are with Thurston yeah. Howard the Third. The Polo, the Polo, Polo Rican. Rican. The Polo Rican. Skillionaire. The Skillionaire. Let that sink in, man. Thank you for coming Thank in, you. man. Thank you for being here, man. Thank you for having me, man. Like I said, the Skillionaire is because, you know, I grew up poor. Yes. But I never felt like I was missing anything. I had everything I wanted, even being poor. So my skills got me anything I wanted. Yeah. There was never anything lacking. No, that's a beautiful thing. You know, it's... When I think of what you're saying there, what that really means to me is, again, it's a mindset. We all come up with, let's say, poverty problems. You know, I know I don't know any of my friends that was born rich, right, or came into any good environments. And we have to all figure out how to get out of those environments because we are products of our environment. And where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Yes, shout out was, to Brownsville. Never I was ran, born never in will. Far Rockaway, Queens. Uh, Queens, you know? stand up. You no, know, so it's like both rough areas and all that. Facts. But, um, you know, Miami, Florida as well, where I, yes. you know, went back and forth yeah, most of my life. So those three places are big parts of my story. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so I'm again, people don't know that I always tell people one of the things I was born in Brownsville. You know, Kings oh, County's that. weird. That's the hospital I was born in, in, in Kings, Kings County. County. Yeah, you know, everyone's so. born in Kings County. Everybody's doc birth certificate is Kings County, <laughs> damn near. So. Kings County is also KCH. Yes. For my Rikers Island people, because when you get touched on the island, they send That's you where to they KCH. They see you, yeah. yeah. And nobody, I, I can honestly say, I don't think nobody on Rikers Island knew KCH stood for Kings, Kings County, County Hospital. hospital. Yeah. It, just, it was just a term. KCH. Was KCH. We going to KCH your ass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, and then we went, I moved from Brownsville. We The family, we moved from Brownsville to Hollis, Queens. So it's kind of similar that you went from Queens to Brownsville. And I went backwards. I went from Brownsville to wow. Queens, That's which deep. is a dope story in itself, you know, because two different environments. And like I said earlier, we are a product of our environments. So with that being said, how do you feel being a product of your environment kind of molded you or created you to the man you are today? I feel blessed. I feel fortunate Mm. to have lived under those certain circumstances because it definitely molded my character, you know, my persona. It made me the man I am. Mm. Without any of that, I would have been way different. You know, so I'm, like I said, I'm fortunate to, Live the harsh life, and yes. Because the struggle gave me the strength that was required for everything I wanted to do later in my life. You know? Yeah, nah. It's a, it, it, it's a, it is a blessing and it's a gift and a curse. Because a lot of people that don't get through that hard time, mm-hmm. they get taken down by it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really a feast or famine, right? If you Correct. gonna you gonna eat or you gonna you gonna be stuck with nothing. Back, like you were saying, uh, the killer be killed, kill is killed, hunt or get hunted. Like yeah. you know, these are the environments that this is what's going on. You either the robber or they robbing you. That's right. So, either, you know, either. that's the <laughs> occupation. When you come outside, they teach you the negativity. You know. Yes. But it's either you're part of it or you a victim of it. You know. And, and how did you come across this man right here? <laughs> yeah. That's right. The great, the great Don De Niro. I mean, I never knew De Niro, right? Mm. Like, he called me one day. 
Out the blue. Out the blue. That's crazy. Told me who he was. Explained himself. Is this the difference between Latin and black? Do you think a black man would have did the same in his position at the time? Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, any anybody with the righteous heart will do that. It I just don't, don't see it as much. Is. Yeah, you're probably right, but they do exist. You know, there's always oh, an equal balance out there. It's just, this, you know, you haven't you gotta find them. them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, De Nero gave me a call and we kicked it. You know, he was, he was familiar with who I was, my music, my story, and... He had just got a big joint venture deal, and he was like, yo, I want you to come with me. Yeah. I was like, let's go. Yeah, dope. Had no, it was nothing else to be said. So, you know, he actually pulled me in with his situation to help my situation get mm. better. So yeah. I toured with him. We recorded a lot of music. I produced songs yeah, on his like album. I see. I gave him production credit. Everything on a big album. You know, that's big. Sure. Right there. Put money that's in my everything. pocket. Cut him a check, you know, yeah. from whatever production I could pull out from the money, for, you know, from the pot. So it was always love. I think it was just the talent and the drive. And everyone was scared of Thurston. Mm -hmm. No one wanted to give him an opportunity because they didn't realize <clears throat> between that, that, that animal was really a young man we all kids. Remember, I, you know, Ifat has taught me so many lessons as I go on that we're really still seven years old, all of us. Right. We just just add the shit life has done to us to that. Mm. But we still that seven year old kid, bro. If you could try to keep that, so I could see through what yo know, deep down because the way he was with his kids, like I knew things about him. Like people don't follow. He had too many people. You not listen. They not following a, a whack. You know what I'm saying? A dude like there's something else here. Right. So I called him. I just wanted to see what it was, and I was like, yo, I got the situation. I think you fit me for what I'm trying to do with all this reggaeton, Mickey Mouse shit. I need some someone who's in my lane. But at this, and then he produced. He did. He see. I only surround myself with people who are more talented than me. That's how I felt, always felt. So I was like, yo, he could bring so much to the table. He could bring stuff to production. You understand? And it was it was just about that, you know? Um, and then he took he took advantage of the opportunity and we hit it off ever since then. And and he's never stopped working, even when, you know, a lot of people don't understand that I put my face out for hip hop when everything was reggaeton. Mm -hmm. I went up, I was the only guy in that, let everything else. They had a whole department for reggaeton called Machete Music. Right. Daddy Yankee, we seen that. Then there was the only one over here with my own situation in the Universal Building, but everyone who worked projects, urban project, only worked for them. How hard was that to break through, let's say, the hip hop, right? Of traditional hip hop being a Latino artist. It was, it for was. both of you, right? Yeah. Like, even you're speaking in Spanish, you're rapping Spanish hip hop. And you're rapping English hip hop, but being Latino, like, did you feel that pressure or how hard the difference between, let's say, a, a, a black artist versus a Latin artist it's in that time? See, today, that those barriers are broke, busted right. wide open. Mm -hmm. There isn't no problem today, but absolutely in those days when you're talking, what year are we talking? Nineties? Well, back then, 2000. that's 2005. Well, 2000, 2005. Yeah. 2005. Okay, so in the 2005, even uh, if we went even further, it's even harder, right? Imagine that's yeah. what that's what it was. It wasn't like the Latinos wasn't part of this hip hop mm -hmm. movement. Absolutely, they're part of it from multiple areas, not just rap. Mm -hmm. You know, the culture of it, the, culture. the well, break yeah. dancing. I think what I, mean, I was able to when do you that get into it. can can kind of uh, uh, co-sign is because I was successful with Spanish language rap in the states and pro programming. That influenced guys like Thurston to write more Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people started writing more Spanish because, yes. like, yo, look at De Nero. He's doing he Spanish do it. rap. We and can he got in. a deal. And we know that's before the deal. Mom, I'm still independent. And before, okay. once I get the joint venture, everyone doesn't know to understand that I'm calling. Now I got a joint venture. Now I'm calling certain people I want to put. But before I got there, it was just, you know, breaking shit open. But sure. I think Thurston had it, I wouldn't say a little harder than me, but Thurston's in Brooklyn. Now he's, he's a Latino rapping, but he's rapping in English. So you know how Moreno's it might be like, yeah. So he has to be better nah, it, lyrically. It was, it's it like a Spanish guy playing me. basketball. The, the Morenos, my peoples, that everybody I grew up that didn't understand the Spanish would tell me you need to do more of that because right. that's what nobody could do. Right. You know, like when I first started. When you say more of that, you talking about the, the Latin, Spanish, yeah. Spanish. Because yeah. I did, I did English. You know, like I did comedy. Like mm. nobody could understand that when I started doing comedy rap because. Nobody looked at me like I was funny. So they couldn't relate to my music. But, my yo, it was extremely hilarious funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, I always did Spanish songs every album, even on my English album. 
And when De Nero had hollered at me and we started working, I had my first Spanish album in my pocket ready to put out. Dope. So I'm just sitting on it. I'm jump. I'm putting everything I'm doing to the side to ride alongside with him and help make it work. So we all benefit, and my my project, you know, I'll be able to work it better right. after the success of everything we were doing with the narrow, you know. But we 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 made a lot of waves, man. Went a lot of places. <laughs> but, but we made saying, a in lot that, of noise. in that building. The problem. Is, this is why I'm glad he rocked out with me because most artists that were with me were rappers. Right. They wasn't doing like it. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying people were mistaken. If Daddy Yankee would have called me at that moment to feature on a reggaeton record, I'm getting on it. Right. But for me to start doing reggaeton, because that's what programming, I wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to jump on that lane. You know, just because R&B was popping now, that didn't mean all the rappers started doing R&B records. They would do one feature with Mary J and he'll try to get and that popping up. Right. You get what I'm saying? If Mary J asked them to be on a record, they would feature. Right. So that's how I looked at it. That's so I was in the building. When you look at inside the building, Universal Latino building in Miami, mm -hmm. Machete, mind you, Machete comes in after. Once I get my, I'm three years rocking Dolo. Once I walk in the building, Machete hasn't been done yet. Right. They're about to get created. So I'm already in the building. I remember when they first signed Looney Tunes, the first producers. I know Looney then they, Tunes. Right, Shout so I remember Looney when they, they were in the building. They were happy to see me. Oh, I remember, all of them knew, because they knew, the, the, they knew it, their own managers and execs said that Nero's in the building. I'm the only artist that owned my label walking around the building. They were all signed to subsidiary labels who ended up getting deals with Universal. Right. They all had owners. So they would also look at me like, that's the respect to this day I have in that whole shit. Like, that nigga always owned his shit. Right. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like it's that, And that was, but I was still up against. So you understand the building. When I brought Thurston and them, we started dropping records. One of the, the problems I, ha I didn't have success in the building is because the Machete department wouldn't work my records. And they're the only ones urban in the whole fucking building. So I had to give my records to work to a guy who's working Luis Fonsi. Because mm. they wouldn't fuck with it. It's not like reggaeton. I'm not fucking with it. But it was a way to kind of... Then I, I dropped La Calle. You wouldn't even show them by La Calle radio stations. I dropped my singles. Like, remember, at the La Calle, mm -hmm. they wouldn't play me in Miami, New York. So Thurston went through that with me. And that's why I always... Because he's seen that those battles we had mm -hmm. trying to bring hip hop as Latinos to mainstream America, and even though the streets respect us, area, and when programming changed, that's when kind of I had to tell the guys, yo, this shit, everyone, let's figure it out because they're not gonna play my records on the radio anymore. Right. You know. Right. And, and from my perspective, right after doing the run with De Nero, so I still never had a situation or anything, a deal or a label behind me. So after we were doing all that, I couldn't wait to put out my Latin album, my, my Spanish. Plus, my, my album was Spanglish. Yes. Yeah. So I'm in the underground heavy. I did not have to go to a different market with my Spanglish album. Mm. I sold it in the same exact place. I was selling all my English albums. Because, you know... And he was I'm, selling I'm, CDs back then. He'd sell CDs. So he yeah, was crushing it. Cross Don't. Cs everywhere. So I realized that I'm selling all these albums cross Cs to these people who don't even speak English. Right. So it was no different when I released the Spanish album. The mm. same audience was buying. And plus, I was Spanglish. So I'm basically teaching you Spanish, going in and out with the English. So my first customer, I remember selling my CD hand to hand in yeah. front of Fat Beats, standing out there, whatever, <laughs> in right? Fat Beats. In front of Fat Beats. Yeah. My first customer was black. Mm. My second customer was white. My third customer was black. Fourth white, white again. It was like my six or seven customer that was Spanish that actually bought my Latin album. That's crazy. So I seen it didn't matter. I'm doing pure hip hop. Yeah. Anybody who who rocks with the culture, they're gonna, they gonna fuck, fuck with, with it. You. Yep. And hard body hip hop. I was refusing to sell out. Yeah. I was refusing. Right. I was real like. Not but he was so when you mentioned with when, when you mentioned hard body, so hard you body. was out battling everybody. I battle everybody in the game. Yeah, in the yeah. game I battle, but you know, but in the music, that's hard stuff, body. Eminem, like when I, I think of Eminem, tell the story about Eminem. When I when I think of we'll get to Eminem, but when I think of hard body, right? When I think of that hard body, when you're saying hard body, I think of underground for real and battle raps all day. Thir that's why my name is Thurston. Is mm. my hunger was for battling for. Combat, confrontation. Yeah. I was like that before I rapped. So I just, you know, channeled the energy differently once I became an artist. So it was always attack. And when I mean hardcore, I mean the hardcore sound of music. Yeah. You know, I produce myself as well. Sure. So 
My beats are MOP beats, basically, in that style of frame. Anything that's hard, raw, official hip-hop. I refuse to do anything else because yeah. it didn't move me. You know, Fine. I live this, man. It's not a game. No, hip-hop, you know? I tell everyone, if you're from this culture, you lived and breathed live it. it. Especially it. early days. And I There was no other way to get through it. From the beginning. From the door. I got to see everybody come through. So I analyzed, studied mm -hmm. And was inspired and influenced by everybody from the beginning. Wow. So, you know, when you know, it was that's my part turn of... to translate it, imagine what I'm putting out or spitting out because I have all the knowledge and I was able to study everyone's skills. Yeah. And then develop my own. You know, that's part of um <clears throat> that's part of what I look at as hip hop's problem. One of our problems as a culture, a black culture, we don't study hip hop like we should. We go into these other races and they know it just as good or better than we do. Probably better, keep it mm -hmm. a buck. Like we could go to a whole nother country and they know every word. They know the history of the they origin. They appreciate it more. The, they appreciate yeah. it more. Here we don't we take it for granted. It. There you go. We take it you for know, granted. You know he said something granted. right now. He mentioned a word. He said skill set. See besides the, the the artists today don't it's an art form. They don't really practice their craft. Mm. They, they they walk in the studio they don't want to write they think everyone's Jay-Z and Lil Wayne right <laughs> so they don't want to write and then they just want to you know what is it the engineer does. the engineer is a superstar it's not even the artist he's the engineer because he's <laughs> spitting two bars saying give me a second so the art form when you don't work on your skill set <clears throat> we deal with so many athletes right both my kids play college football you, right? everyone you deal with boxers you deal with athletes what separates them the ones who are you know, one of the greatest Drake lines, and you wasn't with me, shooting in the gym. What mm. does that mean? When he says the line, you wasn't with me shooting, all the skills that he has, you know where you've been with, where do, where do artists get their skills? Hone it in. They got Shooting in the gym. They got to work. In the studio mm -hmm. where no one's watching them. Not on stage hitting, performing the hit. Mm -hmm. In the studio writing the 12 songs that weren't fucking hits that got you to that hit. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing. So they don't work on their skill set. Yeah. And today, and this is why someone like Thurston, at gonna be 54, me at 54, people, I always get these DMs. Bro, I see you working. Oh, you working hard, right? And it's from other people. And me, and, and he sometimes motivates me. He say, there you go, go. We motivate each other because we also understand we haven't lost the skill set of the work. My, my lyrically, I, I think because I put, I still write. Yeah, I write. Crazy. I make sure. I make sure that the ver. <laughs> the, it's not any word I put there. It has to make sense. It has to be a ride I take you on lyrically, mm -hmm. especially on my English and Spanish. I very few people can fuck with me on that. Right when I put that together, that's the skill set. Right. You know. Um. And I and he said it. And I think today, the artist wants. The social media, he wants to, he's trying to go viral. There's words we didn't use before mm -hmm. that these artists use now. They want to go viral. They need the likes and the comments. Yeah, they don't want the respect. The respect don't matter. It's just the attention. The mm -hmm. attention. And you know, in the underground, your promotion and marketing is really based around how skilled you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like when you're skilled and you have no promotion and marketing, it doesn't matter. Right. Because as long as your skills are not diminishing, your the culture is going to follow The minute you the fan grabs that you. product, they're going to fall in love with you because yeah. the quality's there. You know, when you just we, keep feeding them. With, with that being said, so like, because everything evolves, technology did that to us in, yes. in, in, in business of hip hop, let's say. So once technology comes about, we have to evolve with it or we get left behind. Evolve so, or dissolve is what that's I said. the that's that's the saying that that's I was talking one, about. Yeah, nah, but that's evolve or in. dissolve. That's yeah, a fact. That's what happens to many. You know? Well, it happens to everyone. If you do not evolve, you get left behind, and yes. it's over. You're dead. You're yes, finished. Yes. It's it's a wrap. So we have to stay in front of technology. So let me. With that being said, this being the 50th year anniversary for hip hop, AI enters the game. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on AI? in music as far as you are concerned because i have a theory in certain things again just because it's it's at our disposal and i feel if you don't use it to. if you don't take advantage of it that guy behind the computer that introvert that's nowhere near as talented or as gifted as you are He's is going to use it that's and the, crush the you at what you're doing right now is like 
if you're not AI savvy, the ones that are, they're going to dominate every industry almost. Everything. They're even predicting that in the year 2025, like 250 million people will be out of work because of AI. Yes. That's right there. It's right around the corner. <laughs> not even around the corner. That's 40 steps up the block. You yeah. Know, you know? So when I hear those things, right, when I hear that kind of uh, statistics, I'm a numbers guy. My brain just starts running with it. It says they'll be out of work, but in my mind, they should be independent now. They don't have a job. They actually work for themselves. That's what those 250 million people have to figure out. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it because it's coming. You can't stop uh, Amazon doing whatever they do or Apple doing whatever. You cannot change their mindset. So what can you do about yours? So you have to be the one to make the flip that switch mm -hmm. to say, you know what, I'm going to go and get this figured out so I could do something for me. And that's why I look at it because I really feel when I hear these AI records right now, right, and so there was Drake records that, I mean, they're streaming hundreds of millions of streams, right? It's and it's fake. It's AI Drake. Why wouldn't Drake perform those records? If I'm Drake. Might as well. I would learn those records and perform it and call it the AI tour. But it's really Drake. See, he's the only one that could really do it because he's the mm -hmm. only one that sounds it. It looks the part. Like, it's him. Yeah. So he lost his voice in a sense because AI could imitate your voice and it's still going to be a big legal case. We don't know where it's, it's going to go. It's do wonders for people like uh, the DOC and Beanie C. Mm. They're about to resurrect their careers because of AI. I believe so. And I could respect that. Yes. Because their pen game is still the ultimate, and they're able to put it together. Now they got the assistance. It's almost like your foot was amputated and you got a prostate foot now. Right. But you so can still run. You back. You back I'm on back. the track, baby. I can stand, in, I can stand on the corner and talk to the <laughs> girls again type of thing. So, no, you know, and, and I really look at it like that's part of evolution. And as an artist, so that's why I wanted to get to as an artist, you and De Niro, you feel a way you just said you wouldn't have a feeling i feel there's certain lines that cross is as far as someone's that's deceased i don't believe they should be able to be tampered with because they can't speak on if they wanted you to fuck with them or not mm -hmm. yeah but, but what, anyone what alive if, but what if is to me is open game in this world in, in this in that business i feel if you're not here so when he that but person those cannot are, those say are, those are the people. But what if they was to do an AI Michael Jackson? I don't want them the most. No, that's where I see. I know that. I know Just that's like, the truth. Like when they were talking about, you know, they putting these faces on any actor now. Yes. like they doing that. Bring Bruce Lee back. I'm sure everybody wants that. He wasn't here long enough to give us what we wanted, that but his sense. fan base has never died Be or water. diminished. <laughs> Be water, my friends. But what is this? <laughs> we want Bruce Lee back. Jackson yeah. Yeah. Bruce, what if, what look, we, the, we from the era where we, what if the Michael we went Jackson to all the karate estate, movies. Listen, if the Michael Jackson estate okays for an AI, Michael Jackson AI album to be recorded, written by Babyface, you get four or five great writers who would but, write. But listen, with the Michael Jackson voice, and you put out an AI Michael Jackson album written by these great writers, mm -hmm. people will buy it. It's going to happen. Now, you can't go on tour and perform it, but people will buy it. That's where I see AI is from a catalog. As long listen, as, as, long as the money... From a catalog standpoint, would be good business to enhance catalog. As long as it's going to the right people. I think I told see, you the other when day... when someone's deceased, you don't know who the right people No, no, be. you're right, you're right. The estate. I told well, you the other day... The estate. They're the ones that come Did you hear about first. this AI thing that... A state and sometimes go to state... I don't have the dats to my Kebola album and probably all I can see in that. So sometimes if I'm, depending, if I'm performing in a club, I, I do the, the, the two track and I rap over, it doesn't matter. But if I'm performing in a place that I gotta do straight, there's a there's a thing now that I can put the Pana Pana song in and it separates. Yeah, yeah. and Serato. The that's, yeah, they, yeah, they could eliminate the vocals now on any track. Mm. That's AI. So AI helps. That's great for situations. Technology. No, but that's great for a situation like mine where I would have to have a, a producer recreate the instrumental where in order to, to perform yeah. it. Now it takes the straight instrumental off yeah. of that. So to me, those are things that help. I, me and my, you know, Z's at one of the top technical schools in the country. Uh, Shout RPI. out Z, baby. And then we Keep discussed, and he told me, he used our... our uh, um, What's that app that you ask it any question? ChatGPT. He said, 
and, and I told you this one time, he said, Dad, how the students in the university or the smartest guys using chat GPT, they're like, he's your smartest friend in the world. Why wouldn't you want to have your a friend that you can, no one needs to know right now. You have any mm -hmm. question in secrecy, mm -hmm. you want to plan something in secrecy, you can go to your best friend, smartest person in the fucking world. His name is Chad GPT. Why wouldn't you want to ask it a question? So he goes, Dad, we don't, it doesn't write our papers for us. We asked him, hey, if we had a thesis to write this, what do you suggest my three top things I should write? What do we do in business when we need to, when we have a legal situation, sure. what do you go do? We go call Consult a lawyer. a lawyer. When you, when you, right now, well, who sent me the bio? Your publicist. So what, why not use ChatGPT? Of course you should. So to me, it's those, technology. it's called leveraging. It's so when he told tool. me he's my- It's a tool, just like a calculator. Is is this same when he told thing. me, he goes, I, so when I asked him, who's ChatGPT to you? He goes, he's the smartest best friend I've ever had. <laughs> He's always there for that's me. That's a great idea. That's right. a great that's answer. Great, that's a great answer. Uh, so great what I'm saying answer. is that that And it's a great perspective on how to look at it. Because now they're in the university and these are the guys that are really trying to change the world. Look, I seen, I seen someone, and I only bring this because you know we've had a lot of movements in this country happen from Black Lives Matter to the LGBT, like all these movements. And what I started to realize, do you know where all these movements come from? College campuses. Mm. All of them are the young college kids, and that's where they go recruit them for these movements. But those are, that's where the change is happening, is these college campuses. Ain't no motherfuckers in the hood saying, let's start a rally. Do you tell me they're saying, oh, we, we're trying to get money. Mm -hmm. Who got the bread? We go start a rally in his house and get him out of here. Ain't no, so what I'm saying is that the movement that we're going through today Technology is spearheading. Technology has done wonders for hip hop because when you talk about the DJ, people are mad at the guys that don't use vinyl anymore. Mm -hmm. But that makes the guys who know how to use vinyl incredible. Yeah, yeah. That's a skill set now, they don't it, it have gives in today's. Everybody that but it's, markets back. You know, again, even the old you know, school. When, There's when a skill set you have in the old school that the new kids Certain skill have. sets are no longer needed. It's just I what agree it is. with you. So I, just because you could use vinyl, it's like I could do it better over here without I, it. I don't got to worry about the needle jumping or anything. No, but when you talk <laughs> so about the culture, it was it was kind of it's kind of like having my, a guy draw you a graffiti on a train and having AI do it on the train, right? A, 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 the the essence of what I'm saying is that the culture is still keeping some preserve. Which you know, Chat GPT is Just a great evolution. Evolution, There's nothing. Evolution. So where would fifty? Evolution. So what? Where do you feel fifty years more is going to be? If we're here today, you know what? About hundred. Any time I try to make a prediction of yeah. how things were going to turn, yeah, I was always a million percent wrong, <laughs> yeah. and it was it turned into something even I better. had no clue that it yeah. would turn into. Wow. It's so scary. I learned not to even try to predict it. Just be able to flow and evolve with it. Look at the glasses half full. Sure. Once again, it's the same concept with this. No matter what's thrown at me or thrown at us or our culture, we're supposed to adapt and make it over those hurdles That's right. and get to whatever. It's, it's like anything else that ever happened in life. Cha it's a challenge, it's basically. A challenge. So it either going to defeat you or you're going to find a way to defeat it. You know. Right. So I'm up for the challenge, man. Yeah, whatever for it is. sure, for sure. So again, we're moving. I, I I didn't get you was mentioning before we get on to another topic about uh, Eminem when we was talking about. Well, which, because he it. mentioned you mentioned battle rap. Yeah, and one of his early stories you'll hear he'll tell it now is him. I think either going to battle with Eminem or being at a explain yeah. that because you. Uh, well, I was part of the Rap Olympics with Eminem. We was a team. Sure. You know myself, Eminem, Quest the Mad Lab, Wordsworth. And uh, Juice from Chicago. Wow. So Wendy Day from the Rap Coalition, I'm sure you're familiar yes. with who she is. She was yes. like Shout my Wendy. mentor. Wendy actually yeah. taught me most of what I knew in the beginning, especially when it came from a business, business. aspect. Like so, um, you know, M was part of the team. So mm. Paul Rosenberg was my lawyer, and we did a lot of things together. But Wendy, Wendy always educated me on stuff, what to look for, what to. Look for. 